Hey, everybody, it's John from The Hustle Daily Show. Before we get into the show today, did you know that HubSpot launched an AI chatbot that helps you build awesome campaigns at scale with just a few prompts? It's called Campaign Assistant, and it's a totally free to use AI tool made for marketers and business leaders who spend hours a day on content creation. Campaign Assistant will transform the way that you build marketing campaigns at scale. Craft personalized emails, ads, and landing pages in just a matter of minutes. Just pick the content type, add the key selling points, and let the AI take it from there. And the best part, it works seamlessly with all of HubSpot's marketing and sales tools to scale your output across email, social, and more. So AI your way into the most effective campaigns yet at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. What's going on, everyone? It's Wednesday, July 26th. I'm Zachary Crockett here with Rob Litterst, and this is The Hustle Daily Show. Rob, I got something to tell you before we start. What's that, Zach? So at some point today, this show is going to hit 100 billion downloads. Uh, <laughs> 100 billion? No, no, wait. Ah, <laughs> shit, I got to take that over. <laughs> I was like, wait a sec. Did he say 100 million or 100 billion? <laughs> All right. Yeah, s- small correction there. We're going to hit 1 million downloads today. There we go. There we go. And if you're listening to the show, you might be our 1 millionth downloader, which is pretty cool. We just want to give a huge thanks to you. We love you. And uh, we're going to keep doing this for you every day. And here's the next million. All right. So I know this is going to sound a bit ridiculous, but just hear me out. Today, we are devoting the entire episode to Choco Tacos, (laughs) aka the greatest ice cream truck delicacy known to humankind. The goat. It's the goat. Unfortunately, though, we do have some bad news. The reason we are talking about Choco Tacos is that they are being discontinued. We're going to take a look back at its legacy and what made it such a good niche business. But before we get into that, we're going to do a quick rundown of what's going on in tech and business. The Canadian e-commerce giant Shopify is laying off about 10% of its 10,000-person workforce. Earlier in the pandemic, CEO Toby Lutke hedged a bet that this boost in online shopping would stick around for a while. But on Tuesday, he wrote, quote, it's now clear that that bet didn't pay off. As pressure builds to see a return on the company's metaverse investments, Meta is raising the prices for its Quest 2, its flagship VR headset, by $100 starting in August. So if you're really dying to smoke some meats in the metaverse with Zuckerberg, you better get on that now. Nope. That's the name of Jordan Peele's latest release. Nope. It's a sci-fi horror thriller about UFOs, and it's doing pretty well. The film pulled in $44 million in the box office in its first weekend. That falls just shy of its $45 million to $55 million projection. And despite that miss, analysts say it's a pretty decent opening for an R-rated film. Walmart shares dropped after the company slashed its profit expectations for the 2023 fiscal year. The company said that inflation is causing everyday items to take up a higher portion of household budgets, leaving consumers with less money to spend on items like clothing. And one more piece of inflation-related news for you. McDonald's has been slowly but surely raising its menu prices over the past year to counteract inflation, but customers don't really seem to mind. Sales at McDonald's restaurants in the U.S. are up 3.7% in the second quarter. McDonald's says this is because cooking at home has gone up in price faster than eating out has. In the past 12 months, grocery store prices are up a whopping 12.2%. And menu prices at restaurants are only up a measly 7.7%. All right, Rob, we've talked about ice cream on this podcast before. I know you're a big cone enthusiast. Oh, I am a devoted (laughs) cone enthusiast. Absolutely. Well, what are your thoughts on the Choco Taco? So I love the Choco Taco. And I have a little bit of background on this one. So my family and I go to this lake in Maine from time to time, Little Sebago Lake. There is an ice cream boat on Little Sebago Lake. An ice cream boat? An ice cream boat. (laughs) And I'm telling you, like they absolutely (laughs) crush it. It's crazy. We'll be up there with my nephews and like our entire plan the whole day is basically just getting down by the lake and just like looking for the ice cream boat. Like that is the (laughs) highlight of their day. And we were up there about a month ago and a few members of our family like love Choco Tacos and usually order Choco Tacos and they weren't there. And so we were a little bit suspicious. We were like, what's going on here? Like, why are there no Choco Tacos? (laughs) They didn't have an answer for us then, but it seems like that might have been a precursor to this news that we just heard about. Oh, man. So what is the news here? So the Choco Taco, which has been produced by Klondike for, I believe, the last 
20 plus years Mm. will essentially be discontinued. And it's interesting because one of the articles that I read today while researching this piece essentially couldn't find verification anywhere that this was true. And so Mm. they called Klondike and talked to a customer service person and asked them if it was true. And that person didn't actually know, but they ran it up the chain and they confirmed, yes. They confirmed it. Yeah. So the Choco Taco is in fact being discontinued. Okay. They attributed a variety of reasons, right? Which you never really know what that means. I have some thoughts, which we can get into here in a second. Yeah. But one of the reasons I said was to make room for new offerings, which I guess that makes sense. But when you have something as popular and as amazing as the Choco Taco, (laughs) I think you just hold on to it for as long as you can. Well, for anyone who might not be familiar with what a Choco Taco is, can you just describe it for us? What makes this thing so magical? The Choco Taco isn't actually made out of a taco shell. So (laughs) it's essentially a frozen novelty ice cream treat. Imagine kind of like a very, very thin waffle type cone being Mm. folded over. That's essentially your taco shell right there. On the inside of the shell, there's a layer of chocolate, which is delicious and holds everything together. Inside that chocolate is a layer of vanilla ice cream and then kind of interspersed throughout are peanuts and then another layer of chocolate on top. So that's the real thing. The biggest differentiator for the Choco Taco, and I think one of the reasons people love it so much, is pretty much with every single bite, you're getting a bite of waffle cone, vanilla ice cream, chocolate, and nuts, which is just... Chef's kiss. I don't even know what else to say. I mean, it's it's a very like cone centric ice cream treat. Totally. It's all about the cone. It also, there's this weird thing that happens with the Choco Taco where the cone gets kind of soggy. And I read (laughs) in another piece today, there's apparently like some people that love the Choco Taco are like a little bit critical of the cone and wish that it was crisper. Mm. But then there's this other group of people that love the Choco Taco that secretly love the soggy taco shell. That's fair. And think it just kind of adds to the mystique. Wow, that was some great journalism, Rob, really presenting both (laughs) sides of the story. You know, I appreciate that. It was a busy morning. (laughs) (laughs) So the Choco Taco goes back a ways. Tell us how it came to be. It does. So the main article that I was reading this morning was this amazing article called The Legend of the Choco Taco by Jason Cohen on Eater. And he really went deep. This was in 2016 on the Choco Taco and its entire history. Hmm. And so There's a song called Chaco in My Taco. It's a very little known folk (laughs) song in 1924 that some people think is ultimately what it was named after. Other people attribute the Chaco Taco to Taco Bell, but it was actually created by this guy, Alan Drazen, who invented Hmm. the Chaco Taco in 1983. And listen to this. If you ask him how he thought up the Chaco Taco, this is the reason that he gives. It's supposedly a little bit embellished, but it's still epic. (laughs) So he says, I was on an expedition in Mexico and got separated from my main party. It was hot. I hadn't had anything to drink. And then I saw a mirage, an ice cream taco rising out of the distance. (laughs) That's how I got the idea. (laughs) Okay. Just starting the myth right there. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So Drazen was working at a company, I believe, called Jack and Jill, which was an ice cream business. I think they sold goods to wholesalers who ultimately sold ice cream trucks. And so that's where it started Mm. out. The Choco Taco really from 83 to, I believe, like 89 was just generally seen in ice cream trucks. It was essentially a novel ice cream treat. Hmm. What happens in 89? Yeah, so in 89, Good Humor, which is owned by Unilever, essentially acquired the license to distribution and manufacturing for the Choco Taco. Mm. And from there, you can imagine with Unilever's scale, I mean, Unilever does way more than ice cream. I mean, Good Humor is just like one very small sub company within Mm -hmm. the Unilever portfolio. They were able to completely blow up the Choco Taco scale. So at the time in 89, that meant putting the Choco Taco in about 30,000 convenience store freezers. But in 2016, when Cohen wrote this article, that had grown to 120,000 freezers across convenience stores, warehouse stores, and supermarkets. And if you're having a hard time like picturing this, just picture those like small kind of freezers that you'll see in a 7-Eleven, like by the door where you'll grab like ice cream treats. So Choco Tacos essentially were everywhere after that. That also spawned this partnership with Taco Bell, which I think is actually how I learned about the Choco Taco was at Taco Bell years ago, Mm. which put it in thousands of locations across the country and really took it to a completely different level of distribution. Okay. So Unilever owns Klondike 
and Klondike owns the Chaco Taco. That's exactly right. Okay. Unilever did not own Klondike when it actually acquired the rights to the Chaco Taco, but it purchased Klondike, I believe, in 1993 or so, and essentially put the Chaco Taco under Klondike's control. Ah. It's branded. I mean, I think that probably streamlined packaging and streamlined a lot of those operations since Klondike is already making its own novelty treats. Mm. And so it's been under the Klondike name, I believe, for about 30 years at this point. Wow. And yeah, if you have any reservations about the Chaco Taco being discontinued, you can reach out to Klondike. They are the ones <laughs> that are making that decision. So they will probably be fielding a lot of calls. Well, Rob, you mentioned up top that maybe one reason Klondike's discontinuing the Chaco Taco is to make room for some of its new offerings. What other intel do we have here around this decision? Yeah, so it's really not a lot, which is interesting. My hypothesis here, so I forget where I read it, but making a Choco Taco, I believe, is a bit harder and requires more hardware than a lot of other novelty ice cream treats. Hmm. So my hypothesis here is that it's more of an equipment thing and Uh, with what's going on with the recession and inflation, potentially Klondike might be looking to repurpose some of its warehouse space or something like that. That's the only thing that I could possibly think of that would make any sense because if you've ever had a Choco Taco, you know it's just a ridiculous move to retire this thing. It's it's still a fan favorite. Yeah, it seems truly bizarre to me. It's like one of those cult products. Right. Like it kind of reminds me of McDonald's discontinuing the McRib. Right, you know? right, right. Or I don't know if they discontinued it or whatever. I think it's like seasonal, like they release it select times every year. Totally. But you have like this just completely obsessed following around the McRib. Like people are crazy about it. And there are all kinds of protests to bring it back and make it a staple on the menu full time. I'll tell you what, if what they're doing is discontinuing it only to make it seasonal for summers, I kind of think that's genius. Like if it's difficult to Mm. make and you don't want to produce like as much volume as you did in the past and what Klondike is doing here is just discontinuing it to start putting it out in more limited batches. I mean, it's going to fly off the shelves. That's (laughs) a 100% guarantee. Hmm. You know, I also wonder why wouldn't they just like sell off the Choco Taco brand to someone else? That's a really good question. I would imagine somebody would be willing to buy it. I mean, if you look at how many people were contributing to the conversation yesterday when this news broke, it's very clear that there are a legion of fans of the Choco Taco (laughs) that are very enthusiastic. And I think there would have to be a market for the Choco Taco brand somewhere. I'm super confused by this as well. Are there any other imitators kind of sprouting up to fill that void preemptively? Yeah. So that's the interesting thing. So I don't know if you've been to any restaurants that kind of like do their own ice cream sandwiches or anything like that. Sure. sure. Yeah. There are a few places up here in New England that do that. It's kind of like a novelty dessert and they'll do it in a really interesting way with like different flavored cookies and all that stuff and add a bunch of like new and interesting twists. That is totally happening with the Choco Taco. So there are a bunch of different restaurants and ice cream stores that are essentially offering their own version of the Choco Taco. And I think that's only going to pick up going forward. Like I'd be shocked if that doesn't just totally increase now with this gap in the market of Choco Tacos. So yeah, I think like if you are really missing a Choco Taco, wherever you are (laughs) in the United States, I think you could probably search Choco Taco near me or whatever your biggest city is and and you'll probably find something. Yeah, well- Since we're going to get a million downloads today, we'll give you a free business idea. Start a Choco Taco company like an imitator. (laughs) Yes. Like you will have business. Rob alone will buy like 5,000 SKUs per year. I will keep you in business. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We'll get your back on that. We want to see this thing stay alive. Love it. All right. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, executive producer, Mr. Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. You can go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co and we will catch you all tomorrow. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, We want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts. 